In this video, we're going to look at several different kinds of reactions. The first reaction that I want to demonstrate is a synthesis reaction and the synthesis of magnesium oxide. What I'm going to do is take a strip of magnesium metal and heat it to react with the oxygen gas in the atmosphere. That should generate magnesium oxide solid. Here you can see the example of magnesium metal. I'm going to hold it because it'll get quite hot. I'm going to hold it with these crucible tongs and heat it. Heating the reaction will provide the energy needed to start what is going to turn out to be a very exothermic reaction. You can see the tremendous amount of energy being released. And when this reaction finishes, you can see the solid magnesium oxide that has been formed this white powdery substance. Leave that right on the counter. This reaction can be represented as solid magnesium plus oxygen gas yielding solid magnesium oxide. And I need to balance that such as that. The next reaction I'll show you is the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide will break down into water and into oxygen gas. To carry out this reaction, I'm going to mix a small amount of concentrated hydrogen peroxide. This is about 30% hydrogen peroxide, which is somewhere around 10 times stronger than what you would typically buy. I'm going to mix that into a test tube. Just like that. And then I'm going to use a catalyst called manganese dioxide to decompose that hydrogen peroxide. A catalyst is a substance that speeds up a reaction but does not itself get consumed in the reaction. As you can see, there's a very small amount of manganese dioxide on the end of this scupula and the end of the spatula. And putting it in, it causes the rapid decomposition of that hydrogen peroxide. You can see the bubble forming, the evidence, um, gas formation is an evidence of a chemical change. And as I mentioned, one of the products of this decomposition is oxygen gas. We're forming water and oxygen gas. A good way to test for oxygen gas is with a glowing wood splint. And if that splint catches fire, that's evidence that oxygen is being formed. So what I'm going to do is light a wood splint. Right there. Need the splint glowing, not entirely extinguished. There, it's glowing. And then with that glowing splint, I'm going to put it into the hydrogen peroxide. You can see that it briefly caught flame before extinguishing its own smoke. There, it's growing brighter. That's really good evidence that there's oxygen gas being generated by the decomposition of that hydrogen peroxide. This reaction can be represented by hydrogen peroxide, which is a liquid decomposing into liquid water and into oxygen gas. And again, that reaction just needs to be balanced. And a two there, and a two there. The third kind of reaction I'd like to show you is a single replacement reaction in which we will precipitate some silver metal. The setup here will be a piece of copper wire being inserted into a solution of silver nitrate. 
I'm going to add a solution of silver nitrate to the beaker here. Silver nitrate is oftentimes kept underneath aluminum foil because it's light sensitive. You might remember me saying earlier that silver nitrate uh, used to coat film paper and when exposed to light would be developed and, and generate early style photography. Then into that solution of silver nitrate, I have a piece of copper metal here. You can see the copper metal is just a thin strip. I'm going to coil it slightly so you get a little bit more of it into the silver and place it down to that silver to react. This reaction will take a couple of minutes to proceed. So we'll let it run for a moment and then I'll resume the video. What you can see now is solid silver metal forming on the outside of that copper metal. You can see that the copper is being coated in these crystals of silver metal. And if I shake the copper, I can dislodge that silver and you can see the silver falling to the bottom of the beaker. I can replace that strip of copper and more silver will begin to form on it, begin to precipitate on it. We'll let that reaction run for a little bit and then return to it later in the video when more silver has precipitated. The reaction that we witnessed there can be described as solid copper metal reacting with a solution of silver nitrate, yielding solid silver metal and a solution of copper nitrate. Let me add in the states of matter. Copper nitrate solution has a bluish color to it. And while difficult to see from the video, there is a slight blue color uh, that the solution is taking on. You might be able to see it better at that angle right there. A second single replacement reaction I'd like to show you is the generation of hydrogen gas. To generate hydrogen gas, I'm going to add hydrochloric acid to magnesium or to magnesium metal. So first I'll start by adding a small sample of hydrochloric acid to this test tube. You can see it right there. Then I'm going to add a sample of solid magnesium metal. Here's my piece of solid magnesium. Put it in the test tube. Immediately, you can see a vigorous reaction begin. This is a single replacement reaction between magnesium metal and hydrochloric acid, forming the products magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. One property of hydrogen gas we know is that it's explosive. So this is actually going to be another reaction, another type of reaction, a combustion reaction that I'll show you here. Allowing this reaction to proceed for a moment or two, I'm going to displace all of the air inside of this test tube with hydrogen gas. That is, there was air in this upper part of the test tube. It's now being forced out and being filled with hydrogen gas generated from the reaction right here. A really good way to test for hydrogen gas is to combust it. Here I have a glowing wood splint. And if you listen very carefully, you'll be able to hear the combustion of the hydrogen gas. Did you hear that popping sound? called a hydrogen bark, which is a, a relatively common chemistry experiment, chemistry demonstration. Allow this to proceed again. In the combustion reaction, I generated some water vapor and some, uh, some water vapor, and that's going to um, hinder the ability of a hydrogen to, to combust again. So what I'm going to do is wait for that water vapor to either join the water here or get displaced at the top and generate new hydrogen gas. You can see the reaction is still proceeding. But I'm going to add a little bit more magnesium metal. I'm sure it proceeds fully. A little bit more magnesium. And we'll run that hydrogen bark one more time. Again, listen carefully for the, the bark. There it is. So this was two. This was the single replacement and generation of hydrogen gas and the combustion of hydrogen gas.
In that first example, generating hydrogen gas, I took a sample of solid magnesium metal and added it to a solution of hydrochloric acid. And that generated, again, the products magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. That reaction to be balanced, you can see right there. Then I generate, or excuse me, I combusted that hydrogen gas. Combustion reaction is a fuel plus oxygen gas, yielding the product, in this case, just water vapor. And a two there, and a two there. Of course, the second, maybe more exciting product of this is a substantial amount of energy. Before we look at our final reaction, this is a good point to revisit the examples we've seen so far. You can see that the generation of hydrogen gas is still ongoing. That magnesium is still reacting with some hydrochloric acid left in the test tube. This is the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. It is all but finished, though you still might be able to see some bubbles of oxygen gas forming in that solution of hydrogen peroxide. And for a single replacement between copper and silver nitrate, you can definitely see the blue color of the copper nitrate solution that's forming. And you can see some gorgeous silver crystals forming on that piece of copper metal. At this point, I'd like to look at our final reaction. Our final reaction will involve mixing solutions of hydrochloric acid with silver nitrate. What I'm going to do here is put a solution of hydrochloric acid into one test tube and a solution of silver nitrate into the other test tube, show you the two solutions individually, and then mix them together and we can talk about what happens. You can see as I'm preparing these solutions that both are colorless solutions clear and colorless solutions with no obvious solids in either of them. And again, I'll hold them up for you so you can see them more up close in the camera. There's the solution of hydrochloric acid. There's the solution of silver nitrate. No discernible differences between the two. Now what I'll do is mix the two solutions together. And right away, you can see a solid white precipitate beginning to form. You get some contrast against that. There's our solid white precipitate. This is a really good example of a double replacement reaction. There's very clear evidence of a chemical reaction as the precipitate forms, which is one of our pieces of evidence. And we'll look at the equation, which will give us a clue as to what that precipitate might be. With the up close shot, you can see the very clear solid precipitate that's formed inside of that test tube. So this final reaction again is a double replacement reaction. I took my two ingredients, hydrochloric acid, my two reactants, pardon, hydrochloric acid and silver nitrate, and carried out a double replacement where the hydrogen and the silver switched places. That generated for me products of silver chloride, which it turns out is the solid, and HNO3 or nitric acid. Only because I know nitric acid is soluble and do I see evidence of a precipitate that I can definitively identify silver chloride as the solid precipitate there. If I didn't know that HNO3 or nitric acid was aqueous, I wouldn't know what the identity of that solid precipitate was. All right, well, again, thank you for watching. And here's some examples of different kinds of chemical reactions.